to make sure that Nigeria is salvaged from the bondage of insecurity. When we say salvaging, we mean to rescue, to restore a lost glory, something good that has been existing, but it comes to a time that it got lost of people's hands. How can we bring that thing back? We used to enjoy security in Nigeria, but today the story has changed. I want to make this background before I can talk for some 15 to 20 minutes, inshallah. Uh, about the in matters of insecurity in Nigeria, it's better we know the damages that this insecurity of a sin has caused Nigerians so far. And some of these uh, things I mentioned is not going all around the country. No. I will maybe restrict myself with uh, this analysis to Northwest only, uh, I mean places like uh, Sokoto, Katsina, Zamfara, Kaduna, and probably down to Niger as part of uh, North Central. Uh, so far, since this uh, insecurity challenge began in 2011, according to the analysts, they say that uh, right now, there are, there are not less than 10,000 bandits in these areas I mentioned now. And they started in 2001 just like a single cell, a single gang. But today, there are gangs, there are different cells, and it's more than 120. These same people, these few people, and I've killed more than 12,000 people in this same region as mentioned earlier. And nearly 250,000 uh, livestock have been stolen uh, from this region by these bandits. More than 120 villages have been completely destroyed by these people. And not less than 50,000 people have been in the IDP camp, internally displayed uh, persons and uh, camp uh, in these regions as mentioned. So now you can see that the damage which has been caused already by this issue of insecurity is enough and we shouldn't allow it to continue as citizens of this nation. Nigeria is our country. We were born here, we grew up here, and we are still here, and inshallah we will remain here uh, and doing our best to make sure that this country becomes a better place to live, inshallah, up to the end of our lives. But from our own part, what and what can we do? Uh, as individuals uh, to assist the curtailing of insecurity uh, challenges in Nigeria. Let me first start from the part of the government. The government and together ourselves needs to be just. Because anytime justice is lacking uh, from a society, is not even issue of banditry or kidnappers or armed robbery or any vices that have been happening across this country. Even Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will have to remove his hand eh, from such a country because what is reigning in that kind of country is injustice, which Allah Subhanahu wa Taala doesn't like. Allah the Almighty instructed in the glorious Quran that Inna Allah ya'murukum and to addul amanati ila ahliha Allah is instructing you to return and trust 
uh, to the people that are due to it. So anytime trust is misplaced, uh, people are not dealt with uh, with justice. Injustice and corruption uh, becomes the order of the day. So the result will be things like we are seeing today. I pray may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala come to our aid on time and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala salvage us uh, from these challenges we are facing today in Nigeria, in Africa and all over the world. So one of the major things that cause uh, insecurity challenges all over the world everywhere is the issue of injustice, corruption, lack of parental care, unemployment and poverty. All these are factors that are affecting insecurity in Nigeria, in West Africa, in Africa and other parts of the world. In, in many places you can see that uh, uh, injustice uh, plays out a lot, corruption also plays out a lot. People that are supposed to manage this issue of insecurity and fight it so that the place will become secured for the citizens to live are uh, always found uh, wanting in one way or the other. Allah knows best, but we pray may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring this to an end. And any person that is having hand, a negative hand in this matter, may Allah the Almighty expose him. That is, the, uh, that is about factors affecting um, insecurity in Nigeria. The most important thing there is parenting, lack of parental care, which we must take very serious today. If we say parental is so important to the extent that if parents leave their duty, their parental duty, their natural duty, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows on them, and they do not want to do it accurately, then these issues of uh, insecurities will come in. Today you can see that Majority of these children, of all these people that are uh, engaging in the matters of insecurity in Nigeria particularly, are having some parental challenges uh, from their own parents. Because if a, pa if a father, for instance, or a mother, for instance, will not discipline his child, Anytime he goes wrong, he thinks that uh, he loves him or he loves her. He doesn't want anything to touch his and to touch her. And the, the boy, a little boy, is, is left untouched. Nobody cares about his discipline. Nobody disciplines him or her. The parents always claim that uh, they love him and that is why they have to hate him. Sometimes they have to even beg him. The, most, the worst thing they is that they do not discipline their children and they do not allow any person who sees them doing something unethical or doing something wrong eh, to discipline them. And any person who is found discipline their children will be fought by these parents. Then this, are, this, this is one of the major causes eh, of insecurity because a child is just like a uh, what do you call it, a mold, uh, a mold, a fresh mold. The way, the way you carve it, that is how it will dry up. And whenever it has dried, there is no way you can remold it again. You can't reform it anymore. The same thing to children. So that is why parents must take their responsibility very serious. Make sure that the children are well disciplined, they are well trained uh, from the background. They are sent to school, Islamia school, they are sent to Western Education School, the one we call Boko, and to learn properly. And when they return home, they should make sure that and all ethics and etiquette and of uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, parenting, and are taken care of. And by, by such thing, we are contributing our quota and to the salvation of Nigeria 
from the challenges of insecurity. Because as we are fighting insecurity today, we should also be thinking ahead so that this matter or this challenge will not repeat itself eh, in the nearest years to come. And that is why parents must be very careful in giving eh, education, in giving responsibilities, eh, education, and all the needs eh, to their children and make sure that uh, they are always on the right way. Children that are not well uh, mulled eh, by their parents are the ones that you can find in the bandit area, eh, in the kidnapping eh, system, and all these vices or social vices that uh, uh, is occurring in Nigeria today. You can't see any child that has good background, that his father or his parents eh, give him education, sound Islamic education, sound eh, Western education, a sound home background, you can't find that kind of child eh, in the bandit area or kidnapping or doing any social vice as uh, and these ones are doing today. A child that, uh, that uh, is well trained by his parents and eh, will not be found taking smoking, uh, smoking a cigarette or wee wee or in their home or anything that can intoxicate. And this is the order of the day uh, in, the, in the hands of these uh, uh, people that are kidnapping, people are doing banditry uh, activities in the bush. So I give much emphasis uh, to the parents to make sure that uh, they are one of the problem-solving uh, people of this uh, challenge. Because all these things we are saying is a failure, complete failure uh, from the side of the parents. Now, so some of the some of the impacts of this uh, uh, insecurity or the challenge of insecurity in Nigeria, particularly, uh, the impact is so is so much. I've mentioned earlier that uh, more than 100, 100, 120 villages have been destroyed by this bandit. This is one of the impacts we have, we, we have received eh, about this challenge. We also mentioned that more than 250,000 livestock cattle eh, have been stolen by these people. And we also mentioned that uh, more, not less than 50,000 people eh, have been in the IDK, IDK camp across these regions I have mentioned earlier. So these are part of the negative impact of this uh, challenge of insecurity in our own country. When you talk about education, as Muslim students, every no, everyone can see the impact or the neg negative impact of this uh, uh, in challenge of insecurity in Nigeria as regards to education. You can see now that uh, most of the people that have been kidnapped these days are school children and some higher institutions some secondary schools, and even in some areas like in Niger State, Kegina, some primary school and pupils and were, were also kidnapped. So you can see the impact, the negative impact of a challenge of insecurity in, in, on education. Education, backwardness in education. That is, that, is, that is the worst thing a country will ever receive. Because a challenge that can make the government close down the schools, even the schools that are not really affected because of the fear of the kidnapping of the students has been closed down. And for a year now, some for months, and, and nobody is thinking about it. And then the impact of economics, you can see that how economic of these people that have been affected is, uh, is touched. People have been farming in their areas for 20, 30, 50 years, making their lives better. They have livestock. They have uh, all, all they need mm, as human beings. These people are now beggars, begging for food eh, on the street or in jumping themselves in a classroom or in an area that cannot even occupy 
one or ten people, but a hundred, hundred of people are living in such an area, such an area. So that is one of the impact or negative impact of that uh, insecurity challenges in Nigeria. The impact on education and the impact on the economy. Now, way forward, what do we do eh, to solve this problem? Even though I've started mentioning, eh, <clears throat> what I've mentioned as a way forward earlier is the failure of the parents eh, to, to, to train their children to become reasonable members of the society in, in the future. So one of the way forward is that the parents should take parental care very important. They should take it as a first class responsibility and they have to offer any child. And any person that is your child or is under your care, that person should be taken good care of. Give him sound education, Islamic education, Western education, good home background, make sure that all the ethics and etiquette of the society, as long as they are not against the, uh, the Sharia of Islam, are uh, incited into these children so that they become good people uh, tomorrow, even before uh, us or after we have left this world. So parents should please take care and they shouldn't take this lightly. Then justice must also come to board. Uh, we ourselves, from the part of the government, and uh, the government should deal with the citizens or the indigents uh, justly. Injustice should be uh, wiped out because it is one of the major causes of insecurity uh, in Nigeria and almost everywhere in the world. Then, thirdly, there, we should also engage in Tauva. Let us all repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us all repent to Allah the Almighty and go back to him, beg him, seek his forgiveness, and say a lot of azkar, do what he wants, and shun or keep off from anything he doesn't want. Allah the Almighty says in the glorious Quran that Inna Allah la yughayyiru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayyiru ma bi anfusihim. Allah the Almighty will not change the bad situation of a people until they have also changed their mind. So as long as we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change this situation for good for us, we should be also ready to change our mind. Our mind, our mindset eh, should be changed. Our mindset should be changed eh, from bad to good. And by then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will also assist us and inshallah this challenge will, be, will soon be over. Number four, the, uh, the issue of our charity. Give charity to people and needy and the poor people who do not have much. Give them money. If you have much, give them. If you have uh, extra, give them so that they are also taking good care of. The idea of uh, self, uh, self-centeredness or selfishness and it cannot help any situation. Islam does not like uh, self-centeredness. Uh, give to your people or give to your brother what you like for yourself. That is what the Hadith of Al-Bukhari uh, tells us that Man kana minkun yuminu billahi wa liyumil akhir Oh, sorry. La yuminu akhadukun hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsi. None of you shall become a fine believer until he lost for himself exactly what he lost for his brother, or he lost for his brother what he actually wants for himself. So if you eat good food, if you have money, you have a lot of things, give charity, and then under that charity also give zakah. If your money is up to the nisab of zakah, give zakah to people so that uh, you reduce at least or eradicate uh, the uh, what do you call it uh, in, in uh, poverty and uh, suffering that people are doing in this uh, world and also attached to that is uh, make yourself available to people to assist them in any situation and uh, they need you don't isolate yourself somewhere 
that you are less concerned with people, what they do is for them. No, the world is not like that. The world we live in eh, is just like a coin. Eh, one part for you and other part for people. If you think that you do not need any person, you don't you do not need help from any person, then you should remember that people need your help. That is the situation. If you if you can if you don't want then they want you. So help them make yourself available and to assist them. And then finally, let us all go back to Azkar of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Azkar that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, tells us in the glorious Quran uh, on issues like this. Whenever things happen that are not favorable to us, the Sharia of Islam has always tells us how to manage the situation. So let us repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's go back to the Sharia of Allah and let's not forget our azkar, the morning azkar, the afternoon azkar, the evening azkar, and all azkar that are, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, are ordained to us by the Shira of Islam. The, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that in the morning, if any person wakes up, uh, he should thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Uh, Alhamdulillah, Lazi. Ahayana, Badama, Amatana, wa ilayhi You can see, you, as soon as you wake up, you give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then, any person who gives thanks to Allah the Almighty, Allah the Almighty will not turn back to that person. La in shakartum la azidan nakum. Wa la in kafartum inna azabi la shadi. If you are grateful to me, I will increase your favor. I will give you more favor than the ones you have received. So many people slept and they didn't wake up. When you wake up, say this as God. Then I would be telling you, Mati lai ta mati min sharri ma khalaqa. Bismillah illazi la yaduru ma asmi ni shayun fil abdi wa la fi sama wa huwa sami wa la alim. In the authentic ahadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us that any person who says this as God three, three times in the morning and in the after in the evening, Nothing harmful will affect the person. So we should please uh, go back and submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in general. Uruhulu fi silmi kafa. Enter into peace and submit yourself into Islam in totality. And here I rest my case. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala salvage Nigeria from the security, suffer from the challenge of insecurity from the challenge of corruption and the challenge of bad leadership and from the challenge of a bad followership and followership. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assist us anywhere we go. May Allah forgive us, forgive our parents, our scholars, and may Allah reward be the area council uh, abundantly.